Hello and welcome to another episode of What's Inside. Today we're looking at a vintage Clue game. This is uh, my favorite version of Clue. Uh, it's the one I grew up with. Um, this one is the 1972 version of Clue. There is an older one from the 60s that I know of. And of course the more modern ones, we've looked at one of them that had the extra crime scene that was much different as far as board layout in my opinion. This is the vintage one, uh, to me, the best version of the game. Um, it has a real 70s look to it too, which I kind of dig. This one I found at Goodwill for two bucks, as you can see from the price sticker here. Um, and it's complete, so I wanted to show it to you because um, my copy got destroyed years ago. But um, this one's in really nice shape, except for the box is a little banged up. And that's pretty normal for something this old. This version went on through, I believe, the 80s. Uh, so you'll see a lot of copies of this floating around. And in, in my opinion, this is the best version of it. But that's just me. So this is put out by Parker Brothers for three to six players, ages eight to adult. Um, let's get right into it here. Here's the game board. This one's in really nice shape, like I said. Alright, so, Mr. Green starts down here with Mrs. White, and over here we've got Colonel Mustard, and then over here we've got Miss Scarlet and Professor Plum. Now in this one, we've got the study, the hall, the lounge, a dining room, kitchen, ballroom, conservatory, billiards room, and library. Uh, the study has a secret passage that goes to the kitchen, and the kitchen has one that goes to the study. So basically everybody goes on their starting point and moves around, trying to go to the different rooms to collect cards and uh, list their suspects. The card file goes here, so you, the, uh, the confidential card file goes here, so that's where the murder information actually is, and the rest of the cards are on top usually. So, you list your suspects, and hunt them down using your clue sheet. So the clue sheets uh, have all the suspects and then the weapons, all six of them, and then the rooms. And you just tick them off as you go and you can play four games on each sheet. So you flip it over then and you got another four on the back. So these can last quite a while. And uh, I know you could get replacement pads for these, so there should be a decent number of pads floating around. And I think you can even find the clue sheets online. Now, you also get the envelope, which is your confidential case file. That's where one room card, one weapon card, and one suspect card are going to go. That's who actually did it, what they used, and in what room. And then, on the, then we have the clue cards themselves, which are just a thumbprint and the word clue with like an orangish red orangish red look but they got one for each room so we've got the study the hall the lounge the dining room it's a doily the kitchen the library the billiard room the conservatory the ballroom and then you've got your weapons, like the candlestick, the knife, which looks more like a dagger to me, or a gladius, uh, a lead pipe, the rope, a revolver, and the wrench. And then you've got your suspects. You've got Colonel Mustard, who looks like he's got to really take a poop. you got Mr. Green, who looks angry. Mrs. White, who's already holding a candlestick. The saucy Miss Scarlet, Professor Plum, who looks really creepy, and Mrs. Peacock. Then there's also these three cards uh, that were just advertisements that kind of were dividers when you'd get the deck. Um, they, they would separate between the, the weapons. And basically these were just inserts. Um, if you like playing Detective and Clue, try playing a General and Risk or try payday they're just little advertisements but they did have the backer cards and when we lost one of these cards we'd write the name of that card on here as replacements 
So that was kind of handy because they already had the back of the card. Um, and this one is just a uh, advertisement for Boggle, Rook, and Pit. And this one is Monopoly and Sorry. So they're just Parker Brothers ads, but they do come with the deck. So that it, if you're a total completionist, then be aware that those were in these two. So those are the cards. And then you also had these multicolored pawns. One, you know, each color was specific to the characters. So you had uh, Colonel Mustard, Professor Plum, Mrs. White, Mr. Green, um, Miss Scarlet, and who was the other one? I should know this. Professor Plum, Miss Scarlet, Miss White, Mr. Green, and Colonel Mustard. Is that everybody? Yeah. Oh, it's Peacock. Peacock's blue. I'm smart. So these were kind of specific looking. They were a little different, a little higher brow. Let's see if I can, can't really get the camera to focus too well on that. Sorry. Um, but yeah, uh, these pieces got lost a lot, and they were kind of hard to replace because they had a very specific, unique look to them. They were a little bit different than other games, so you might have some trouble finding these specific pieces. Then you had a dice. And you also had your six weapons. There's the candlestick. Let's see if I can get a better shot of that. Probably not. You had your plastic rope piece. The gun, which is a really weird looking revolver. But, you know, I guess if you're going to kill somebody in a board game, that's the type of weapon. Then there's the lead pipe. Your dagger knife. And your wrench. I'll see if I can uh, edit in a, a better shot of the assortment of pieces here. But five of the six are metal and the rope is plastic. So be aware of that if you're looking for these. Um, these pieces do tend to get lost a lot. Uh, the pawns and the weapons are generally what's missing. Sometimes you can find them individually or as a collection online or in other board games if you buy them used. Uh, the instructions for the game, like so many, are printed on the insert of the box. So this is just your taking up space piece to help fill out the size of the box um, so that you could put everything in the tray. But like so many games from this time period, the instructions were just printed on here, so be aware of that. There's no rule book per se. The, the rules are very straightforward and simple, and they're just printed on here. So it's effectively about a page worth of rules. So that's really all that's in there. Um, you need to know about the, the paper... Um, case confidential uh, case file uh, the pieces and the smaller bits because those are the parts that are always missing so be aware of that and um, you should be able to find this complete it's it was a very popular game in the 70s and 80s so there are a lot of versions of this one out and there's it's still a classic so you can still find newer ones I prefer this version the newer ones have downplayed the murder mystery aspect and made it like the Clue Juniors where it was like somebody stole something. So they've really downplayed the whole dead body aspect um, and they've replaced a lot of the metal bits with plastic over the years, that sort of thing. So the, the 2013 one we did um, was pretty good. That one looked pretty good but the board was much smaller. This one has a lot more squares to move through, and it often took longer to play. So, I mean, there's two rows, there's a door, and you had to go around. You had a starting point for each character, and you had to walk around to the different building, different buildings and rooms. Oh yeah, there's a secret door from the lounge to the conservatory and back again, too. Forgot about that. So, 
yeah, that, that's Clue. It's uh, a real simple game. I think it's one of the best games for um, city, like beer and pretzels kind of games where you sit around and just hang out and talk. Um, but that's what's inside the 1972 version of Clue. Um, that'll do it for this episode. As always, thanks for watching, and we hope to see you next time on What's Inside.